Okay, so in this video I'm going to be showing how we're going to be doing our deployment. So here I have the, well, our, our basic project, the uh, web development open menu. Uh, the front end we generated with create react app. I haven't done anything different. Uh, Chris uh, went ahead with the assignment and this is an example of what you guys should be doing for the uh, part two of the first assignment. Uh, just you create your component with your name and then C for component, uh, basically this right here, um, and then insert it like this inside of app.js and then make, and of course all of this work you will be doing on your individual branches, and then do the pull requests on GitHub, and then we'll merge them all in. At the end of the day, we'll be able to see everybody's component on the basic uh, application. So first thing, uh, well, this video is going to be focused on the on the deployment. Like, how do we put it on the internet so people can go to uh, to some URL and see our application? Uh, so, first thing I have to do is I have to build the application, uh, and you're you're going to see with Create React App, it uh, it comes with a bunch of scripts that facilitate the building. Uh, so, I'm just going to say yarn build, um, and it's going to Oh, I need to be inside of the front end. So now I could do a yarn build. And what that's going to do is it's going to use Babel. It's going to use Webpack. Webpack to uh, minify everything. It effectively take all of the JavaScript files that we have for our project and make it into one deleting white space. Um, Babel is going to transpile it so that it's going to go from ES6 to ES5, which will run in all current browsers. Um, and, that, and then it created this build directory. And here we have effectively our entire site. Um, this manifest.json is for progressive web applications so that if you're, for example, on an Android phone, you could add it to your, uh, I guess, just to your, I don't want to say desktop, <laughs> your phone top, <laughs> uh, so that it'll be an icon uh, and it'll it'll feel like a native app on your phone. Um, so then we we could modify that stuff, but it's already set up with. Uh, we'd have to set up service workers to intercept data database calls, so it serves a local cache that so could work offline, etc. We will be doing that, but later. But this is the basic uh, build, and if you see, we're gonna we just have one very massive JSON script, and of course, no human being could read this. Uh, this is the transpiled and minified JavaScript, so that's basically all the nice JavaScript that we've been working on that looks like this, and we can happily make sense of it, and then it just gets compressed and uh, optimized and transpiled down uh, into ES5. So you're going to see a lot of function keywords. I mean, you could probably go through this and start taking it apart, but um, that would be crazy. OK, so this is our build uh, generated by the Create React App script that uses Webpack and Babel. Uh, now what we need to do is we need to put that into the backend client folder. So I'm just going to grab everything from here. We're, we're going to automate all of this later. I'm just doing it manually so you can see the process. Uh, I'm going to copy. I wonder if that worked. Let's see. Copy. Go into the client, into the client of the back end, <clears throat> and then paste. So now we have our client in the back end. We have to do one thing with loopback. We have to effectively, let me close this. We have to effectively configure it to serve this client because if I run loopback right now, it's just uh, what it's configured to do. Uh, it's configured to whenever you hit the root, it's going to give you the server status. So first, first thing I have to do is I have to change this path. So I'll just go to the status. So if anyone goes to our site, dot com slash status they're going to see the service status uh, and I want when they hit the root for them to go to the uh, to what we're serving in the client folder so I'm going to say this no I'm not I'm going to get on my branch first and I'm going to check my status uh, get status 
uh, untracked files, that's fine. We don't need to track them again because they're just consistently generated. When we deploy, we're effectively going to do a yarn build and then a G Cloud deploy app, something like that. Um, and then these builds are going to change a lot. And we don't want to track this necessarily because, as you can see in the file names, they have these hashes and they're going to change all the time. So we'll just constantly be getting like, oh, this file was deleted and changed. And it doesn't really matter. Um, we're committing our code uh, in the clear text readable format inside of our repo. So that's going to persist that uh, when we do the build and deploy, we're going to make um, effectively a static artifact. Um, so all we have to do is yarn build inside of the front end. It generates the build code. We put that into client. Um, so that's just an explanation of why we see all these untracked files. Uh, could probably throw this into the uh, git ignore. Um, first, let me check my branch. What branch am I on? So git status, git branch, a uh, great habit to get into. So great, I'm in my branch. Uh, I'm about to start work. So what I want to do is I want to make sure I've got all the latest and the greatest. So I'm going to pull. I'm even going to go to dev and pull dev make sure I've got all the latest yep and then go back to my branch uh, if I would have had changes from dev I would have gone I would have done a git merge dev and then that would match my branch to the latest dev branch and then I'd be ready to start new work um, okay so I'm on my branch so I'm I'm going to go ahead and make changes now so I'm gonna point the by default uh, I don't want the, the default of the root of the of our site to show the status, so I'm going to change that to a very, to a specific URL. They have to go to dash status to see it, um, or we could get rid of this line altogether. Um, and again, this is instead of loopback. We're working on the we're working in the uh, configuration files right now, so this is the root file. The next thing we need to do is we need to set it up to serve uh, static files and it might be here or it might be here and again this is kind of the nature of uh, of loopback is once you get used to it you start figuring out where the configuration files are uh, that you want to do so for static files I know I need to add something here I forget exactly what it is so I'm going to google it I'm going to say actually I'm going to duck duck go it uh, loop back uh, static file setup and what's that tell me tell me something okay so we go to the, takes us to the loop back documentation uh, it's redirecting us this is article for loop back 2 we're actually using loop back 3 so let's go over there wonderful and great uh, so now what I need to do is change and modify the default root route handler. I already did that. That's where they're telling you to change it from the default root, which will show the status of the server, change it to something else. Uh, and then finally, uh, you want to, we want to add this here. Um, and this is going to be the directive in the configuration of loopback that when the server boots up and starts running the code it's going to hit this configuration it's going to be like oh, okay i'm going to serve static content from this area here so i i don't fully comprehend this syntax uh all i know is that it works so that's what we're going to do because we want it to work uh, and i'm just going to add it in here Oh, okay, so I'm effectively replacing this this one that was empty, and I'm adding this content, so I'll just delete this. All right, so now I say for static files, I'm going to instruct it to serve the static files from here. So then I'm going to do save. Now that we did that and we did the basic build of our application and put it in the client folder, uh, when I run the back end, That would be yarn start. And 
it is telling me cannot add percent s ordering conflict files after final okay so i copy pasted wrong so let me it says i can't put this after final so since i deleted the empty one from up here i'm just i have to put it in on top of final save clear yarn start okay it's happening now so when I go to the root of the directory now, instead of seeing the status, what I will see is this cached information. Uh, let me just grab this website, this here. And what I want to see is, let's go to incognito so I have no cache. New cache. All right. So here you can see where Chris added his component into the app.js file and this is all the, the the default application that create react app gives us um, after the assignment the current assignment is done we'll see everybody's component just kind of stacking here um, so here we see we're actually serving it from the back end this is not our front end development server and I'll prove it to you because I'll run it simultaneously so you can see the difference that it's a different server so let's go into the front end and yarn start and so this is the development server and it's running on port 3000 um, they look identical but what we did is so this is for development so as I'm changing things I can see the changes live but this is an actual build we transpiled minified did all that stuff and put it here so, and you see it's on port 3001. Um, so now that the back end is set up to serve the static content, which is our build, and it's also set up to uh, serve that at the root. Um, now what we wanna do is the deployment. So for deployment, let me go ahead and spin these down. Down, I'm probably gonna need the back, no, I'm definitely gonna need the back end. So we're actually going to deploy from the back end. As you can see, the back end actually has everything bundled in it. It's the it's the entire server, uh, which is an uh, Express JS server that runs on Node, uh, that uh, is going to serve our our built front end inside of this client folder. So all we need to really deploy is the back end. This front end folder is just for development and to generate builds that we're gonna copy into the back end. So we actually deploy from the from the back end. If you can imagine we take all of these files, we package them together and then we upload them into a cloud instance. And then that cloud instance needs to be configured to run node. And with Google App Engine it actually takes care of all of that for us. If we were not using Google App Engine, we could use a cloud instance, we could use our own server, configure it with Nginx or Apache, um, and do all of that configuration, managing logs, managing the, the metrics, checking the uptime, all that work. But with Google App Engine, or with something like Heroku, or with something like Amazon Elastic uh, Beanstalk, um, or even Google Firebase, these are all um, infrastructure, infrastructure as a service or platform as a service uh, things that abstract the complexity of managing a server online for us. And they're like, here, just use our server and put your files on it. And as long as it has a consistent, uh, a kind of a standardized uh, build, which Create React App and Loopback gave us, in the sense that we just run yarn start and it runs the application and then those services will be compatible with the web application we're going to be building. The first thing I need to do for Google App Engine is set up the SDK. So the SDK is going to be is a software development kit for Google which allows me which I need to install on my machine. It's going to allow me to authenticate and to create a project. So I'm just going to go through all the steps here. Uh, so this is hosting a static website on Google App Engine. Uh, this is straight out of the uh, Google documentation. 
so first it says create a project and retrieve the project ID of an existing project to use. So let's do that. I think I've already done it. Let me double check. Uh, okay, this is... No, I want to use the FIU account. All right. So here we are, no organization. So I've got my first project, an open menu. So let's go to open menu. Uh, this project, I created it with a, um, as a node JS project. So it'll be able to, it'll understand yarn, start, and things of that nature. Uh, so I went ahead and created the project. Now I need to get the project ID. Which, let me go back here to App Engine. And Dashboard Services. Versions, instances, firewalls. Okay, and here are my project IDs. All right, so yeah, I completely did not know how to find that. Uh, what I ended up doing was just clicking up here. <laughs> uh, and there it is. So here are all my projects. I could start a new project here after having just clicked here. And so I see I'm currently on open menu project and here's the ID. So I'm going to copy that because that's what the previous instruction told me. I'm going to come back here. Uh, no, I'm going to close that. Uh, close the wrong one. Close this one. Come back to this one. All right. So that took me there. It said retrieve the project ID of an existing project. So I've got it in my clipboard. Uh, tip, you can retrieve a list of your existing projects ID with the Google, with the G Cloud command line tool. Okay, good to know. Install and then initialize the Google Cloud SDK. So I need to install the SDK in order to be able to authenticate and upload things to my uh, Google console, uh, to my Google Cloud. All right. Google Cloud SDK, blah, 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 blah. How do I install you? Mac OS. Uh, tars.gz's. Download one of the following. Uh, extract. I wonder if they have an. Well, all right. Modern versions of Mac OS include the appropriate version of Python required for. Google Cloud SDK, any additionally installed Python interpreter should not interfere with the Google Cloud SDK installation. All right, should be good. Down, so I downloaded that. Uh, extract the contents of the file to any location on your file system. If you'd like to replace an existing installation, remove existing Google Cloud SDK directory and extract the archive to the same directory. So let me show this in folder. Let me create a new folder. Let's go to documents and let me just drop this here. Oop. All right. And let me do a little bit of cleanup here. So my spark dev vids, let me move all of these video files out of here. Whoops, not you, just you. All right. Little cleaner. So extract you creates a folder. Here we are. Uh, so this is the, the SDK. So these are these have the binaries which run the tools. I see we could see G Cloud command. But now I need to configure my system to so that I can just have it available on my path. Uh, let's see if it's going to guide me through that. Oh, yep, it's got an installation script. Uh, optional, use the install script to add to tools to your path to add the uh, Cloud SDK tools to your path. You'll also be able to opt in to command completion for your shell and usage statistics collection. Run the script using the command. So we copy. And I need to be in the directory in the terminal. So let's do terminal now. 
and documents and what was the name uh, Google Cloud SDK and then <clears throat> just make this a little bigger Boop. all right so I'm in the directory that I <clears throat> downloaded the SDK files, unzipped them. I'm inside of the unzip directory, and I'm going to run the uh, the install uh, script. And this script is basically just has commands for adding all of the uh, all of these tools uh, to my path, so that later on uh, here I'll show exactly why. So let's say I try to run this. Well, I think right now it would actually run because I'm in the directory. Let me get out of that directory. So if I run gcloud, it's going to say no command found because it's not in my path. So I can't use any of these tools at the moment, of these command line tools. So let me go in there, and I'm going to run the script, and that's going to put it in my path so that I could run... Do I not have the install script? install py where's the install sh let's go to here and see what it says okay but ba, ba, ba. you've also been able to up okay option use the install script to add google cloud sdk so i should see this install sh here why are you know here Oh, sorry, I was in the bin. Install sh. Yes, it is here. Google Cloud. Okay, my problem is is that I put the wrong path. I put the folder in. But if I do an ls, you'll see the install sh right here. Okay, so I could just do install sh. Uh, welcome to Google Cloud SDK. All right, cool. Let's maximize this and go for a ride okay do you want to help improve the Google Cloud SDK sure okay not install not install not install installed install install to install or remove components at your current SDK version to, to, to run to update your SDK installation to the latest version run gcloud components update modify profile to update your path and enable shell command completion Yes, I want you to be in my path. Uh, the Google Cloud SDK installer will now prompt you to update an RC file to bring the Google Cloud CLIs into your environment. Enter a path to an RC file to update or leave blank to use bash profile. So I guess I'll just write all that stuff to my bash profile. Okay. Uh, bash profile has been updated uh, and they created a backup for me in bash profile that backup okay just in case anything broke uh, just in case you don't know a bash profile is when you start a shell like the one I'm in right now uh, it reads this dash this bash profile and it and it basically does any commands you put in that file uh, and it makes them available to the current environment so you could create environment variables, uh, things of that nature, which I'm sure is what they did. They created environment variables pointing to the Google commands. Um, okay, start a new shell for the changes to take effect. So right now, if I do gcloud, I won't see it because I haven't restarted, so command not found. So let me close this shell, and let me start a new shell. And if I do gcloud, again, this forced it to reread that dat bash profile, uh, the dot bash profile script, which they modified. So now, there we go. So it recognized the command. It gave an error because I'm not giving it the appropriate uh, arguments, but it's also telling me how to use it. But now it saw it. It's not a command not found error. So now my environment is set up to run the Google Cloud SDK. So let's uh, clear this. And let's go back to here. All right, so I'm all set up with the Google Cloud SDK. 
Okay, open a new terminal so that the changes take effect. Done. Run gcloud init to initialize the SDK. Optional. Install additional components using the component manager. Um, I think I'm good. Install the latest Google Cloud client libraries. Ba, 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 ba. Why would I need to run ng or gcloud init? Okay, this is probably where I'm going to be, <clears throat> be authenticating with my account. So it'll run the tool, initialize it, say which Google account do you want to associate with uh, the commands you're going to be running, that type of stuff. So I think I could run that anywhere. So let's say g cloud init. Welcome. This command will take you through the configuration of gcloud. Your current configuration has been set to default. Uh, you can skip diagnostics next time by using the following flag init skip diagnostics you must log in to continue would you like to log in so now we're going to be doing authentication yes i would like to log in oh great does it through the browser uh wants to access your google account for my fiu thumbs up you're now authenticated with the google cloud sdk wonderful Bum, 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 bum. Your browser has been open to visit. Yep. Uh, you are logged in as, yep. Pick cloud project to use. Please enter numeric choice or value. Oh, we want to use open menu. Okay, so now I'm doing, I'm associating it to the, to the, I guess the target in the cloud that I'm going to be pushing the project to. So I'll say, go ahead and choose the open menu project. Uh, your current project has been set right, has been set to open menu. So now when I do the G Cloud app deploy, it's going to target this project. No setting default zone region, this feature, blah, 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 blah. Some things to try next time, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm almost all set up. Let's see. So I'm done with the Google Cloud SDK setup, so which allowed me to authenticate and target the uh, cloud service that I'm going to be uh, effectively uploading my backend to. So now the question is, how do I upload the backend? Well, one thing we need is a configuration file to tell it how to do that. So let's go to the uh, website because I don't remember off the top of my head. Okay, install the latest. Da, 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 da. Okay, so we did the Google Cloud SDK, uh, creating a website to host on Google App Engine. So we need to make a app.yaml file. Configure the settings of your App Engine application. Uh, we can ignore the rest of this part because they're just giving us some ideas of how to serve the application, but since uh, we've already set up our server and all that stuff, we can ignore that. So we go to the uh, YAML, uh, they do all this stuff. Let me see. And then we, we give this command in the, uh, in the directory. When you, when you deploy your application files, your website will be uploaded to App Engine. To deploy your app, run the following command from within the root directory in your application where the app.yaml file is located. So we're going to put this, so this is a configuration file that the G Cloud command from the SDK is going to use in order to upload the project to the cloud or deploy. Um, I already had made a YAML file before and it's not going to be as complicated as it, we, we basically just have to tell it we want you to run a Node.js and in the flex environment um, and that tells it how to run in the cloud so I'm going to copy that and we're going to create this YAML file, app.yaml. Paste that. So we're telling it to use Node.js because this is all Node or JavaScript code that needs to run on Node.js. Uh, Flex, I think, is one of the easier environments to use. Uh, I think you could change this for different ways of running the Google App Engine instances and Flex just automatically does load balancing, scaling, etc., which is actually pretty, pretty phenomenal. Okay, 
So now I suspect I don't have the G Cloud here because I might need to restart. Yeah, so command not found. So let me restart. I wonder if I could just restart the shell. I'll just restart it all. Okay. Again, go into the back end. Uh, here's the YAML file, everything's ready to go. So now I could do the command, which is G Cloud App Deploy. Uh, I think this will work. G Cloud App Deploy and fire away. Description. Descriptor. Ba, 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 YAML app. Okay, great. So it's saw that. Good. Uh, source is the backend folder. Good. Target is open menu. Project up in the cloud. Great. Target service default. Target version is that number. Okay. And we're going to be on this URL. That looks good to me. Continue. Yes. All right, so now I wonder what it's doing. Let's look at the web console interface. Make sure I'm in the right account. Nope. Okay, and let's look at App Engine. I don't have permission, you're crazy. Oh, I have to select the project. There we go. Uh, let's see, services, versions, instances maybe. Read about instances, create instances of your app to run your code and serve web requests. With automatic scaling, App Engine creates and de deletes instances as needed to scale your app automatically. You can also deploy services configured to run a fixed number of instances with manual scaling. Information about your app's active instances will appear here. Okay, so the instance isn't spun up yet. An instance is just like a virtual machine in the cloud that's going to host things. So here we see it's currently building. Okay, build. Starting. Step zero. Let me maximize this. Remote build output. Uh, okay, so here's yeah where I ran the command, and then this is all the feedback it's ta it's telling me it's basically creating everything, uploading the files, provisioning the the server, setting it up for auto scaling, uh, and then copying the files, fetching storage object, so it's allocating resources. Uh, Pulling the image, so this is probably an image of a virtual machine that is pre-configured for Node.js, since that's what we told it in that we want our runtime environment to be. Uh, it's doing security checks to get against uh, signatures for the image, etc. Downloaded newer image, okay. Checking for Node.js, pulling image, okay. So then it got the Node.js image, put that on top of the other image. Pull complete. Ba, 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 and that's copying. Run. It's saying run user local bin install node. Install unsafe perm. Do, do, do. Warning deprecated Swagger UI no longer maintained. Please upgrade to Swagger UI 3. You should commit this file. Do we have a package dot nesh lock? No? Okay. Add it three. Okay, so it basically did the npm install right here, uh, which got all of our packages removing. Blah, blah, blah. I wonder if we can configure this to use yarn. Anyway, uh, command npm start. Boom, it's starting our server. Uh, removing intermediate container successfully built tagged 
pushing the, the, the I guess now it's configuring it to be accessible through the public facing interface uh, updating service this may take several minutes uh, I wonder if we can see the instance now there we are so we've got a, an instance running it's up uh, and here we're going to be able to see basically all the uh, all the metrics and analytics related to this instance. We can check its heartbeat, whether it's running, instance is running. Uh, we could probably do more. So latency, we could see the traffic, the CPU. wonder how much memory they gave us. No memory usage at this time. I guess they scale it automatically based on usage and the CPU probably too. Um, so at the end of the day, what all of this means is that when it's up and running, we should be able to go to this URL and see our application. Of course, our application right now is just the default React application plus uh, Chris's component. So let's see. So now, okay, and this is on localhost, but now we should be on the internet and anyone could go to this address and actually see our application maybe no <laughs> oh poor robot uh, it's still not fully up so we're waiting for and I think the first deployment is the one that takes the longest uh, so here it is the little moving dots tell us that it's still updating and configuring and doing everything um, but as you can see as far as the process goes the deployment uh, is pretty simple uh, and it is something we're going to automate. Um, yeah, I was going to give a note about continuous integration, continuous delivery, and continuous deployment, which are, I guess, common or yeah, common best practices for large web applications because they allow you to effectively, as a front end developer, um, make a modification inside of the source and then when you do a git commit on that change it'll effectively trigger and cascade a, an entire build and deployment deployment process where when it hits github probably not on the commit on the push when you push it to like the central repo if you're using github you'll configure a trigger on github to fire the continuous integration uh, test which will automatically spin up an instance clone your repository and then do a yarn test or an npm test which will run all of your unit tests and then if all your unit tests pass maybe integration and uh, system tests as well um, if all the tests pass and then that'll fire another event which will say okay you can go ahead and deploy this version uh, and then it'll effectively bundle it into an artifact, meaning that it just, I mean, we could even get into Docker and containers and Kubernetes and uh, managing cloud clusters. And that's where I want to go, but I don't think we'll make it in the next six weeks. We're going to be focused on the web application part of this. Uh, as far as deployment goes, this is pretty much as far as we're going to get into it uh, during this session. We have six weeks left. Uh, we need to get into, we need to focus on React and building the web application. Um, but it is good to know at least the full life cycle. Um, but we will be skipping some best practices such as unit testing, integration testing, continuous integration, continuous delivery and deployment. Um, but those things I hope to cover during next semester, uh, Spark Dev, Web Dev, we'll see. Uh, okay, starting traffic. Perfect. My rant was perfectly timed. So now we should be able to see this. The robot should have finished composing himself. Ta-da! So now we're live on the internet. Uh, and we've pushed our code all the way. And that's how we're going to be deploying. So now you could hit this on your smartphone. You could... Uh, you. You guys know how the internet works. All right.
So now that's the story of how we're going to be deploying. So thank you for your patience. I hope you found it educational. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm kidding. You don't have to. All right.